Senator Milne. Thank you, Mr Acting Deputy President. I rise today to speak in support of Australian journalist Peter Grester and for freedom of the press around the world. Last December, Peter Grester, along with fellow Al Jazeera colleagues, Mohammed Fahmy and Baha Mohammed, were detained by the Egyptian authorities and held on fabricated charges of spreading false news and supporting the banned Muslim Brotherhood. Since that time, Peter and his colleagues and their families and friends have suffered deeply. In Torah prison, Peter was locked away in a cell 24 hours a day, only allowed out for questioning by prosecutors. And at various times, all three men were subject to solitary confinement. Throughout each of the 12 days Peter and his colleagues spent in court, the world watched as the farcical trial developed, devoid of evidence, facts or credibility. After 177 days locked away on absurd charges, Peter was sentenced to seven years in prison. Seven years in prison for simply doing his job. His parents, Juris and Lois Grester, visited him in jail last week, describing it as an horrendous ex experience. They said, had we had a small bucket between us as we were sharing hugs, it might have even overflowed with tears, with tears and sobs. In Peter's words, and they're paraphrased by his brothers because they're not allowed to write down anything while they're actually visiting him, Peter said, I'm devastated and outraged by Tuesday's verdict. Throughout this trial, the prosecutor has consistently failed to present a single piece of concrete evidence to support the outrageous allegations against us. At the same time, our lawyers have highlighted countless procedural errors, irregularities and abuses of due process that should have had the entire case thrown out of court many times over." Unquote. It was a shocking show trial, Mr Acting Deputy President. It's got terrible implications for Peter, for his family, for his colleagues, but also for freedom of the press around the world. And of course it has very negative impacts for Egypt itself, as its reputation around the world uh, has been absolutely smashed because of what has happened to these journalists. Shock over the sentence handed down to Peter and his colleagues has reverberated internationally. Uh, in the United States, President Obama has backed calls for the journalists to be immediately released, with the White House condemning the verdict highlighting that the prosecution of journalists for reporting information that doesn't coincide with the government of Egypt's narrative flouts the most basic standards of media freedom and represents a blow to democratic process in Egypt. Secretary of State John Kerry labelled the sentence as chilling and draconian. William Hague, Britain's Foreign Secretary, was appalled by the verdict and called on the Egyptian government to review the case as a matter of urgency. As UN Human Rights Commissioner Navi Pillay has highlighted, not only is this sentence an appalling miscarriage of justice, but the case is a breach of international law. Amidst this international pressure and outcry, Egypt has been unwilling to act on its democratic rhetoric and ensure basic freedoms. Not only have the Egyptian authorities failed to uphold freedom of speech and of the press, they have fundamentally damaged the way that Egypt is perceived worldwide. This has recently been recognised within Egypt itself, with reports that President al-Sisi has said, quote, the sentencing of several journalists had a very negative effect and we had nothing to do with it. I wish they were deported after their arrest instead of being put on trial, unquote. That is the President of Egypt saying they should have been deported, not put on trial. Now, I hope, Mr Acting Deputy President, I really hope that those comments reflect a changing position within the Egyptian government. And I implore, on behalf of this parliament and behalf of the Australian people, I implore President al-Sisi to secure the release of Peter and his colleagues. They will now be subject to an appeal process. 
And the first thing that should be done is that that appeal process not, must not be dragged out over months and months. It must be conducted in a timely manner, after which President al-Sisi can intervene. And I would hope at that point allow uh, Peter Grester to be pardoned and his colleagues and come home. But what Egypt is failing to understand is that the protection and growth of democratic society requires ensuring protection and, ex and respect for the free press. As Peter's parents, Lois and Juris Grester, highlighted when the verdict was announced, the abhorrent sentence is, quote, a very dark time, not only for our family, but for journalism generally. Journalism is not a crime. Egypt's prosecution of Peter and his colleagues is another disturbing step in the erosion of free press and expression worldwide. As reported by the Committee to Protect Journalists, 211 journalists were imprisoned in 2013, the second worst year on record after 2012, in which 232 journalists were detained. Each journalist detained is representative of a widespread international erosion of democracy and fundamental human rights. Around the world, laws in enacted under the guise of national security are being used to prevent journalists from doing their job and to crack down on dissent. As Peter Grester eloquently articulated in his letter from Torah prison, the state will not tolerate hearing from the Muslim Brotherhood or any other critical voices. The prisons are overflowing with anyone who opposes or challenges the government. Secular activists are sentenced to three years with hard labour for violating protest laws after declining an invitation to openly support the government, campaigners putting up no banners ahead of the constitutional referendum were summarily detained, anyone in short who refuses to applaud the institution. So our arrest is not a mistake, and as a journalist, this is my battle. I can no longer pretend it'll go away by keeping quiet and crossing my fingers. I have no particular fight with the Egyptian government, just as I have no interest in supporting the Muslim Brotherhood or any other group here. But as a journalist, I am committed to defending a fundamental freedom of the press that no one in my profession can credibly work without, one that is deemed vital to the proper functioning of any open democracy. And that is such an important statement from Peter Grester from prison in Egypt. Now these principles, I'm sure, are understood, but they need to be embraced in a fledgling democracy. Now, what's to be done, Mr Acting Deputy President? Well, a lot of things can be done, and I wanted to use this opportunity to highlight to people listening and to the community that if you want to support Peter Grester, let's actually do it and get behind him. There is a website, freepetergrester.org. There is an email address, freepetergrester at gmail.com. And you can send a letter to that email and it will be printed off and taken to the prison each week by his family for Peter to read. And I think everyone can share that idea that if you were stuck in a prison somewhere receiving letters from people around the world but especially from home really matters. So I would urge people to think about just writing a quick email because it will make a difference. But also on the website, there is an opportunity for donations. And I'd like to just read what the donations will be used for so people listening might think they could possibly give something. Quote, we would like to continue to maintain a family member in Egypt during Peter's incarceration, helping to fulfil his emotional needs and support him throughout this very difficult period. To help cover these costs, as well as ongoing legal and other expenses, we've established a bank account for donations. Funds will be used solely for expenses associated with securing Peter's release. Once achieved, 
funds will be distributed according to similar causes for unjustly imprisoned journalists. So I do use this opportunity in the Australian Senate today to implore the community to get behind the campaign to free Peter Grester and to free all other journalists, uh, those other two who are imprisoned with him in Egypt, but to think about how you can support him personally with a letter or with a donation to allow his family to continue to be able to go to the prison, give him the legal help that he needs. And it is on the legal help that I now want to just go quickly, Mr Acting Deputy President, and that is the case of the appeal. The appeal process, uh, whilst the evidence in the court shows that the court process was pretty much a sham, the whole world is now watching this appeal process. We really must get behind and put pressure on the Egyptian government and the Egyptian legal uh, system to make sure that the appeal process is properly conducted and to be held in a timely manner. That is the one thing that we can all make sure we're doing. And of course, get behind the campaign, the free AJ staff campaign that has been going worldwide. And hundreds of thousands of people have been involved in this campaign, over 30 countries getting behind uh, the petitions and the social media campaign, everything we can to uh, basically highlight the fact that the verdict of the court uh, was uh, a shocking outcome, but to get behind just the support uh, for the campaign. In terms of what Australia should do, no to do now, uh, the, I have spoken with the uh, Foreign Minister for Foreign Affairs. Uh, she has assured me that Australia is doing everything it can through diplomatic channels, and I understand that people in the Australian Embassy on the ground have also worked extremely hard and are doing whatever they can to support Peter Grester uh, in trying to, uh, first of all, make sure that he is uh, represented and that at least uh, his concerns are being considered and upheld by the Australian consulate officials on the ground. But I think that the Australian government needs to continue and perhaps to ratchet it up a few knots, I'd have to say, in a few notches, to continue to put pressure on the Egyptian government at the highest possible levels. We should be leading international action to intervene and secure the release of Peter Grester and void this ridiculous verdict. All diplomatic options, and I've also said including sanctions, should be on the table. We need to ratchet this up. And it is, A, because we have an Australian citizen, a journalist, in jail, in Egypt, improperly imprisoned. But there is also the statement about freedom of the press around the world. We have to stand up for that or else journalists, wherever they work, in countries around the world, and I've just given the figures of the number of them who have been incarcerated and the numbers, you know, hundreds, this is a shocking thing, put into prison for simply doing their job and reporting on what is going on in various countries and various under various regimes around the world. Now, we are a country in Australia that values and appreciates the importance of the free press and the need to protect the, the freedoms of journalists. Now, the Australian Greens will continue to fight for Peter's freedom and for his fellow journalists in Egypt and around the world. We will fight to keep them out of prison and will do whatever we can for people who are unjustly detained. We need to free Peter Grester, free the Al Jazeera staff. And I want to send a particular message to Peter and his family just to say that we in this parliament stand with you. The Australian people stand with you and we will get you and your colleagues out of prison and home. Don't give up hope because there are millions of people around the world working to secure your release. And as my time has almost expired, Mr Acting Deputy President, I just say again, you can send Peter a message on freepetergrester at gmail.com and you can go to the website 
freepetergrester.org and make a donation so that his family can continue to support him while he is incarcerated. Thank you, Senator Milne.